Ooh, hello there, my fellow miners and crafters. Good times with Skyr here, and welcome back to the wonderful worlds of Hermits and Crafting. And we're flying through Cherry Island, where in today's episode, our master plan of this entire island is going to come to fruition, and that is endless emeralds for our trading needs for all the redstone that we can use to make our beautiful redstone products here. And the jelly army is growing ever greater here. And I've even got a jelly on my shoulder. <laughs> Look at that, double jellies on my shoulders. Look at that, that's amazing. <laughs> but anyway, my friends, welcome back to Cherry Island. And we are here in the Sweetberry Farm. And you might be wondering, Scar, how is the Sweetberry Farm functioning? And I'll tell you this, it is functioning beyond my wildest dreams. And I, I won the world! No, no, no! Whoa, no, not the berries again! Oh, are you kidding me? What the heck? You can't humiliate me in two episodes in a row. Oh, I want revenge on that zombie. Where are you? Are you serious? Did you despawn? Oh my gosh, he did. <laughs> Maybe this is a lesson, a lesson in revenge, that revenge is never the answer. It just fosters despair in your heart as you seek it. So we're going to let it go, as Elsa once did a long time ago, and let that revenge go and move on to happier and more productful things of the episode. And that is this farm, which is absolutely killing it. It is one of the best things I've ever made in terms of farms. It is so productive, and it even received a high praise from the man, the myth, the legend. You know him, you love him, Doc M. That's right, Doc gave this farm a compliment and said that it was unique. And that made me super happy. And the unique aspect, of course, is the pigs keeping the foxes active throughout the day being inside. And uh, yeah, that made me super happy. Recovered all my possessions and we'll take a look at the yields of this farm in a little bit. But I want to turn our attention to the upper level because considering how much sweet berry we are generating, we don't need to make another farm over there for now. So we're going to turn our attention to the main hall where we are going to assemble a villager trading hall like you've never seen before. And this will be equipped with a really fun aesthetic design in here with conveyor belts and cranes and all sorts of absolutely amazing things as we take our sweet berries, trade them for emeralds, and then purchase redstone from the villagers on the other side. And we're going to do some kind of mechanism that will bring our sweet berries up here for permanent storage. I don't know how to do that yet, but we'll figure it out together and uh, then trade with all the villagers. And it's going to be absolutely amazing. But one thing is for sure, these sweet berries are not enough nutrition to maintain those pecs. So we're here over in Sahara with our Sahara Now Pass, where apparently we can buy an entire shulker box of golden carrots. And that is exactly what we need. But the problem with this whole scheme is the fact that I am diamond poor. All of my diamonds are caught up in the hourglass and this box costs 11 diamonds. Where am I gonna get 11 diamonds? Am I gonna have to go mining? I will, I am that hungry. There's always one sure bet for diamonds and that is Ghostly Glass, one of my favorite shops I have ever made here. And it even comes with ghostly dog butts. That's right, there's a ghostly dog butt right there. Anyway, please, please be, yes, yes. <laughs> oh man, we are gonna have to restock this place for sure, but that's 36 diamonds, that is enough to finally eat. Oh, it took a while to get here when you're out of nutrition. <laughs> here is Cub Share, let's check ours, and another 15 diamonds. We're gonna be eating well. If only we can get there in time. Oh my gosh, <laughs> we got here in just the nick of time. 11 diamonds here, so let's drop that into this box. I think it's the payment box, I'm pretty sure. Either way, I think they'll find it, and we can now eat. Ah, oh, that feels good. Well, that's an interesting turn of events. Sahara is completely out of stock of everything. Hmm, I wonder what's going on with them. I also noticed that the uh, the Idea Boys over here have uh, poked the bear <laughs> and built this little tower next to them. They're not gonna be happy about that, believe me. What is the perfect build in your opinion? When I think of what Minecraft is best at, it is the blending of aesthetics and functionality, and it's something that I've always lacked in my Minecraft builds is more functionality. But with Cherry Island, we're trying to change that, and we are now going to start turning this area 
into what it was always meant to be a giant trading hall. So the first of our goals today is to bring villagers from somewhere in the world to Cherry Island, breed them up, and as they're being bred up, we're gonna transform this into a beautiful factory that has functionality where we're gonna have work pods for our villagers. Aesthetically, we're gonna have a fun conveyor belt with robotics and things looking like they're assembling, you know, comparators and repeaters and things along those lines. And yeah, I think it's kind of the fun of blending both aesthetics and functionality. And that is our goal today. One of the big functionality things that we need to achieve, and I don't know how to do it yet, is moving items upwards. Now it's very easy to move things downwards, but upwards has its challenges. So we have all of these sweet berries now, and we need to send them all the way up to their cold storage so we can easily access it for when we're trading with the villagers. So let's go get ourselves some boats, some minecarts, and see about finding some new employees for Cherry Island. First village located, but it looks to be completely deserted. Hmm, this might be a little harder than I thought. Village number two, it looks like it's completely deserted too. Village number three, you guessed it, deserted. Found village four, but these are claimed villagers. Also, tell me that villager is not a pumpkin pie salesman. Village number five, and it's a nitwit, and he's going for a swim. Village number six, Looks promising. Yes, those are villagers. And that was pink beds. Those are my pink beds. I've been to this village before. I can spot my pink bed at a thousand block distance. And these are definitely mine. I think this is where we built this into a 1.14 village for cats way back when we built Ikea. Huh, this is amazing. <laughs> well, gentlemen, I am a recruiter from the famed computer store Cherry and I'm here seeking employees. Employees willing to put in a good day's work for an honest wage to make premium products at premium prices. Are you interested? Anyone? Hello, step forward. <laughs> step forward, no? Nope, you, Dumbledore. Dumbledore is so into electronics. Dumbledore, if you would have just lived a little bit longer, you would have enjoyed the iPhone. You would have, you would have, I promise you. But I'm gonna need another. <laughs> I'm gonna need another, but for now, for now, you are now contracted to work at Cherry. The boat is the contract. I feel like the Grim Reaper bringing my prey to the underworld. <laughs> oh, hello turtle. I'm sorry about that, I'm running into you. Didn't mean to bring you to the underworld too, but let's park our last employee there. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna assemble a little holding pen here where we can get them breeded. And from there, we're going to wait for that process to take place as we assemble the factory in the interior of the hall. So as I said before, we're gonna build out the pods for them to live and work in, and then start working on our designs for our more aesthetical approach, which is in the center more of a conveyor belt with like repeaters being assembled, things like that. So yeah, this is gonna be a huge project. So my friends, let's hit super fast build boat and start building out the factory. Super fast build mode, and we've got ourselves one super awesome modern trading hall for our villagers to live and work in. And I think it is looking really, really nice. So over here, we have the Alpha Wing, and on this side, we have the Bravo Wing. And you know what? I was looking at this, and I'm like, what does it remind me of? And then it hit me. It's both familiar and not. It looks like, it looks like a modern Alcatraz prison. <laughs> 
<laughs> you got the cell box with the bunk beds. You get this is like basically a toilet in the sink. Ah, I tried to make a happy place for the villagers to live in so they weren't crammed in a one by one. In the end, I created a prison. <laughs> But anyway, let's take a look at the details here. So you can't access the interior of the work pod. You have to push the button if you want to go inside. Now, I have seen in testing a villager go up the staircase and then go right into the bed. But that was very rare. Mostly one just stands here and wishes he could go to sleep. <laughs> so you got your two smokers over here for the two different uh, villagers. Uh, they cannot get out of here, nor can anything get in. My only concern is that things could like bat in like a cat. It's like trying to bat it like a mouse. But for the most part, I think that will be fine. So yeah, on the upper level here, we've got the conveyor belts that are the cranes. So that crisscrosses the top of the ceiling. So I think that looks nice. We cleaned up the windows. I do want to fill in this dark gray area, which is incredibly boring and blank and needs a little pizzazz. So we'll think about that as the video progresses, but let's go take a look and see how that breeding is going. Listen closely. That is the sound of productivity here at Villager Beach, where they have been breeding like crazy. And we now have enough villagers to fill in the trading hall and maybe even just a few excess, just in case there are accidents in the transport to and from. <laughs> Also, they have a turtle friend. It's named Shelly. Just hanging out. Keeps some company. Also, can we have a round of applause in the chat for the legend himself? The farmer who kept his hat all the way from the village to here? <laughs> He's not letting that thing go. He's holding on to that. Uh, but yeah, this is uh, this is great. I am really happy the way this came out. This was a little easier than I thought, getting them all breaded up. Now, what we do need to focus on is getting enough blaze rods to be able to fill in the cleric's chambers with brewing stands. So that's something we need to do. After much flying around here in the nether, I have found the Blaze Farm. Now, I've been here before, but I'll be quite honest with you. I really don't know what this does or this does. And I mean, well, that's a chest, obviously, but this is a pressure plate that opens the door. <laughs> so yeah, I'm just gonna, you know, push some buttons, pull some levers and uh, see if these, um, Blazers come down here. Not the basketball team, but you know, the the blaze with the blaze rods. I need those. We got two stacks of blaze rods out of here, but something up here tells me I didn't do this right. Putting the final touches on Bravo Wing, which is now fully equipped to house the clerics for the redstone. And the Alpha Wing is where we are going to trade the sweet berries for the emeralds. And I think this will work out really, really well. Now, originally this was reversed and I had the smokers on this side, but I think it makes more sense as you come up the staircase, this is the start of the process. This is where you get the emeralds and that is where you get the redstone. So I think that's just, I don't know, it makes more sense in my brain. So where we need to move now is the actual moving of the villagers into this area. So I think we're gonna have to go through the back door here and uh, leave my employees alone. <laughs> You don't go anywhere near them. They are beautiful, beautiful souls ready to make beautiful products. You stay back. This has been an incredibly frustrating experience to try to get them in the carts and up into the cells. And I don't understand it. Why don't you want to ride the dirt roller coaster? Who wasn't want to ride a roller coaster? This is absolutely insane. I now feel sorry for Shelly having to deal with all of these villagers. <laughs> Come on, please just get in the mine carts, guys. They don't, they do, they are infuriating. Ladies and gentlemen, we got them. I've been playing Minecraft a very, very long time, since 2010, and I, quite honestly, have never dealt with anything more frustrating than Minecraft villagers. These guys are testing my patience, and I'm a very patient man. <laughs> it has been over four hours trying to get these villagers in their workstations. They do not want to cooperate. They don't like their beds. They don't like their workstations. And it has been a pain to try to get them assigned to their stations. Like this guy, he does not want to have a particular workstation here. I've had to remove the ladders on the back over here. I removed their beds because it looked like they were trying to pathfind to the opposite cells um, beds. Like, look at these guys, they're just hanging out up there floating about the room. <laughs> so yeah, this is a, uh, this has been a really, really hard project just to get them assembled because I have quite honestly never dealt with villagers before. So yeah, this is a quite a learning process. 
So we still have a few more villagers like this one who will not take to his brewing stand. He does not want to brew me up a milkshake. And that's very frustrating. So yeah, a little bit more work and hopefully we can get these things assembled. Just taking a sanity. Oh my God, where'd Cub come from? <laughs> totally surprised me. <laughs> Hello, Cub. You are, you're very pasty white over there. <laughs> I am taking a sanity break here by bringing some pigs into a pen to slaughter so that we can then trade for sweet berries. So yeah, this is uh, quite therapeutic, my friends. We are getting very close to completing this. Now, most of the villagers here are in their right workstation pods and doing what they're supposed to be. There is a few rapscallions here like these two. This one is just determined in life to become a butcher and I don't know what to do. And this one doesn't want a profession. I removed their workstations in hopes that that might fix it. It hasn't yet. And this guy has become one. Now I removed his workstation and then he becomes a cleric? <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I don't get this stuff. You remove it and he becomes it. I don't know, it's just gonna infuriate me. So I did a couple of test um, trades over at these guys and I started kind of working down the way because we have to go to the very last trade to get to the sweet berries. So that is gonna be quite the process. Now I have set up a very extensive um, butcher's palette, if you will. All the different things that I need to trade to get the sweet berries. We got the chickens, we got the pigs, and now we have got the cows. And I even have Azuma, as you can hear, there is a horn going in the distance. Um, I'm gonna buy a bunch of emeralds from him to speed up this process, so yeah, we are getting there. Well, this episode's been a little bit more complicated than I thought. So one of the issues was that some of the villagers were not restocking or going to sleep. So what I've done is I've moved their bunk beds down to the lower level. I've removed the barricades so they go to the beds that they want to go to. Now the key is to find the right workstation for their pod. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to slowly place back all of the brewing stands in hope that that will reset them so that their beds and their brewing stations are in the same room and not have to deal with this pathfinding issue. So this looks a little strange from my camera account here, but the rationale behind this is I've sealed in the work pods by removing the beds and the workstations. So when I put down the beds, they jump back in those beds and then put the workstations there. And that in theory should bind them to that work area so that they can restock and live in the same spot. As you can see, they just went in. So let's do it before the sun rises and hopefully this works. Cross your fingers, please. I don't wanna jinx anything here, but I think it's working and I wanna give it a try. So with a lot of adjustments here, I think these guys are now sleeping in the right beds and using the right workstations and not pathfinding. So let's start trading and see once and for all if this is working. Excuse me, sir, I need your sweet berries. Trading down the entire line, I achieved eight stacks plus 52. That is a lot of emeralds. And I have maybe two or three of those villagers that are not master traders yet. So eventually they'll get there. So let's see how much redstone this will yield us. Those emeralds yielded us six stacks and just about another half stack with an excess of emeralds left over. So that leads me to think here, how can we make this even more efficient? So I spent a few minutes planning out how to make this slightly more efficient. Now I have a couple ideas. The first of course is to move the sweet berries to the upper level. Now we've been planning this for quite some time and I finally have an idea how to make this work. So of course we have this storage device right here replicated on the other side. Now we need to meet these two in the middle and then send it straight upwards. Now I found a video from the one, the only DocM and Pixel Rift showing off some mechanisms that we're going to try to incorporate together to send the items upwards. So let's see if we can do this. So 
You might be wondering what on earth did I just make here? I tried to make piping and I think it might work. So let's dive into the details of the system. So we have our existing uh, storage and unloader device right here. And what I installed under it is the thing that I mentioned before that uh, Pixel Rift showed in a video that I'll link in the description. And that device will send, well, let me just throw something in here. Let's throw the signs in there and it will shoot those guys out. They will pop up this pipe and then up into this one and then straight up into the trading chamber where we'll build an even more elaborate storage area to hold our sweet berries. And yeah, so far, I think it's working. And that is like a first that something's working the first time here. I'm happy about this. We did it. The pipe is moving items from the lower area up to the trading hall and those sweet berries are really flying out of there. Now the question is, how do we contain them? Do we build a storage array with just chests or do we build something that packs shulker boxes automatically? Now that would be amazing to have the shulker box automated packing system. I don't know how to do that. So maybe we could find a tutorial or maybe a hermit could help out with that. Um, but that's kind of where I'm leaning because I would like something that has mass storage to really hold a lot of those sweet berries. Um, as for the rest of the area, these walls are so blank. So yeah, I'm going to do some more thinking about what's going to be the cap of that pipe. And also we need to finish off the design of this room. Well, after four days of work and doing something that I have never done before, and that is work with villagers, we now have a functional unlimited supply of redstone. And that is absolutely amazing. So in their interior here, we have our sweet berries being produced, sorted and sent up through our piping network to the villager hall above. And like I said, an unlimited supply of redstone here and it is being sorted into these chests now maybe eventually we will get the shulker packer but for now this will work and we have a decent supply here and this thing is already filling up oh my gosh this is incredible so yeah this is looking good one thing cub mentioned is we need to cut down on the amount of iron golems here so we can put some burning blocks down here that will finish them off without us aggravating the villagers and uh, yeah so look at them all in there tucked away and i am super super happy with the way this has all come out so yeah wait what is that we have a ghost block <laughs> anyway we got some overhead conveyor belts moving about we got lighting up on the walls we still have a ton more work to do in here but there we go i think that is good for now four days of work i really hope you like this and yeah like i said oh my gosh we have an endless supply of redstone now so until next time this has been good times with scar and i oh we just really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch the videos and if you believe the video is already that would be much appreciated and until next time we'll see you later and don't forget to subscribe because you may just become scarred for life